Have you been thinking about buying a home computer? With Christmas and Hanukkah just a few months away, your children, and maybe some older children, may have already put them on their most wanted lists. There is plenty to think about before you buy a home computer, and consumer counselor Phyllis Eliasberg is here to give you a look at what you could buy or what you should buy, or what you shouldn't buy. Well, you know, Storm, you see those ads all over the place. It seems everybody is interested now in home computers. Well, so far, home computers are just a fraction, a small fraction of those being sold in the United States. But because our technology is growing by leaps and bounds, computers can help us with a lot of household items for grown-ups as well as for the kids. What are you going to use it for mostly? Well, probably uh, schoolwork and because they have like cartridges that could teach you stuff and math and stuff. I'm interested in having something that I can use a word processor with. What do you want to do that for? Primarily for typing and working at home. Use it for trying to develop uh, ways to make money. <laughs> <laughs> but computers can do a lot more than help you make money. They can provide games to amuse you. They can be used to tell you what's playing at the theater or what you've got in the closet. You can look for all your dresses, let's say, that are red and you type in the machine, once you've programmed it, of course. Let me see all my dresses that are red. This is a basic computer setup, about as basic as you can get. You take this, the program, on this tape cassette, you put it in the tape recorder, it feeds the information into the computer, the computer does what the program tells it, and feeds it out on your television set. If you could bake a cake and go from step to step and follow the instructions, you can write a program and use a computer. But when you buy a computer, you've got to make sure you'll be able to operate it. And if you don't know computer hardware from a hammer and a screwdriver, it could take you a while to learn. You can learn a language basically in a few weeks, but don't expect to buy the machine, go home and be a whiz at it. It's going to take really months before you can do anything uh, productive with it. Many youngsters learn computer science in school these days. But if you're out of school, make sure the computer you buy is simple enough so that even an adult can use it. So what we try to do is um, develop a self-teaching manual so that as you take it right out of the box, it tells you how to hook it up, how to even hook it up with your own television set as well, and learn to teach yourself as well. And you also have to teach yourself about prices. Computers range from $100 to $10,000, but the cheapest models may not turn out to be the most economical. You're probably better off not going that low end and staying in a medium range price range if you really want to be serious about computers. But now may not be the best time to buy any model. If you can wait a few years, you may be able to find a better bargain. And the whole market should evolve fully by 1985. Are we going to see a decrease in prices as computers become more popular? There'll be a decrease in price, but you'll tend to see more for your money. Well, not only will there be a decrease, you'll get more for your money, as the man said, but you have to know when you're buying a bargain. And one way to know what you want and, and the way to find a discount is you check the yellow pages, call all the discount stores with toll-free 800 numbers, and do some comparative shopping on the telephone. And speaking of comparative shopping, two weeks ago, we compared the prices of developing photographs at different labs. And the price at Willoughby's, including tax, comes out to 47 cents a print. Unlike other labs, they will charge you one price for price processing a roll of film, whether or not all of your negatives come out. Storm? You know, it's amazing to me the tremendous impact that the home computers have had on, on everyone, and yet it seems the people I've talked to say that it takes you longer to do something by putting it into a computer and calling it up again than if you just kept simple records yourself in the house. Sometimes. If you really, I've seen some computer experts really do it, and I'm really jealous and I'm learning how myself. If you're just going to write one check, it will absolutely take you longer to do it on the computer than it will just to do with your little calculator and write the check. On the other hand, if you're going to do all your bookkeeping at one time, you can put a program, you can do your own program once you get proficient at this game, you can put the program into the, the computer and you could probably do it much more easily. It, it's, it's a matter of really, you know, it's also new to most of us. It's a matter of really learning how to play with the whole thing and learning how to use it to your own advantage so that you would be able to determine what, what's going to take time and what isn't. Okay. Thanks, Phyllis.